What is up, guys? Welcome back to the recap of day two, round two of His Majesty Mohammed VI International Chess Tournament in Casablanca, Morocco. My name is Titus Stromavicius, and I'm a chess grandmaster. I'm doing a recap of this event because A, I played a former world number two player on the rating list in this event, and B, uh, this was one of my best events ever, uh, and I wanted to share my experiences and games with you from the event. So in round one, uh, I managed to win my game against uh, Avinash Rambesh from India, and I was on one out of one. But as you can see, there's a lot, is, um, a lot of the starting uh, favorites uh, that are missing from sort of the uh, rankings uh, on the list as they failed to win their uh, round number one games. And uh, again, in, in such a small event, uh, the opponent's uh, strength will uh, increase uh, quite quickly. And in round two, I was already playing um, a 2450 player, uh, Sose Andre Ventura from uh, Portugal. And uh, I was kind of uh, perplexed about the pairing uh, as how I how I should feel about it because I'm happy to be white and I'm happy to be a rating favorite, but I'm also unhappy that my opponent beat uh, the number three rated seed in the event, Gus uh, Gadir Gusenov, uh, in in round one. So I wasn't sure if my opponent, you know, just got lucky uh, and played one good game, or if he's, you know, sort of starting a streak uh, for uh, a great event of his own. Uh, and uh, before the game, uh, I was kind of expecting my opponent to play Catalan. I decided to play knight f3. Uh, I would say if I played d4, there's probably not going to be much, uh, not would have been any difference, uh, so to speak. Uh, we probably would have transposed more or less uh, to the to what we had in the game and what I expected to happen. Uh, my opponent played d5 as I expected. And then after g3, I was expecting my opponent to play knight f6, uh, e6. And uh, yeah, go for some sort of a Catalan setup uh, with, you know, knight f6, e6, bishop e7, castles. And uh, I wasn't too pumped up about the prospect of it because I felt like, okay, white is probably going to be better in most of the lines. But I th also f thought that uh, the situation uh, for black isn't all that bad because he's very solid. And, uh, you know, if he doesn't make any major mistakes, the position is definitely very defendable. Instead, my opponent decides to play c5. And to me, it was uh, a complete shocker. And I was already sort of uh, a little bit worried about what was going to happen. Um... My opponent actually, uh, I saw some of his games afterwards, and he was playing this constantly. So I was just unlucky to be paired against him so early into the event, uh, where he sort of, you know, had this uh, new weapon prepared, but hadn't used it yet. Uh, and I was sort of the first person he got to use it on. So just uh, poor timing on my part a little bit in that sense. Uh, but, you know, uh, the game goes on sort of. Bishop g2, knight c6, d4. Knight f6, castles, e6, c4. And my opponent takes on c4, and again, I've seen, you know we've, we've seen this position before. Uh, it was one of my games in uh, Koala in, in the last event, um, and uh, in that game I decided to take on c5 uh, because I felt like my opponent was significantly weaker. So I thought the ending should be, you know, very uh, sort of uh, good chances, uh, give me good chances to win. But in this situation, I wasn't as confident because uh, my opponent was, uh, you know. An international master 2445 so a very strong player in his own right and i haven't checked this uh, at all before the game um and i remember that uh, after the game in kavala i checked that my notes you know suggested 95 in this position and um again i didn't check it before the game unfortunately and i remember th that the notes uh, actually had a lot of sort of relatively long lines i would say um for for both sides uh, that would need to be memorized and at the end of the, all, the, all of those long lines, the position is still just completely equal. And I, th I felt like, uh, you know, with him being prepared to play this opening, he would probably be, you know, fairly well booked up. Uh, whereas I would struggle over the board. Uh, and, uh, you know, best case scenario, I would remember and then we would still uh, just make most likely a draw. So instead, I decided to sort of improvise uh, with uh, a move that's... Uh, definitely playable in this position, but I've never really looked at Queen e4, and I just wanted to imbalance the position as quickly as possible. And I felt like the the, the maybe the resulting position would be uh, sort of favorable in trying to create some chances. And uh, you know, it's kind of easier sometimes to play something you're not familiar with because you find it sort of um, you you find it more interesting, obviously, in the in the first place because you don't know the uh, the outcome of the position yet. Uh, whereas, you know, everything else you looked at is, is obviously eventually a draw. Uh, and there's this excitement that you, 
you get when you play something uh, that you're not sort of necessarily familiar with, but looks interesting. At the same time, you know, uh, this was definitely not not the right approach as I should have probably just stayed to what I quote unquote knew best. And uh, luckily for me, my opponent wasn't also all that, um, you know, familiar with the uh, positions that we got because again, this was his per first time playing this opening uh, in the database that I could see. Um, so my opponent obviously plays b5, which I kind of expected, queen d3, c4, queen d1. And again, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, but I, I felt like queen d1 was uh, the most sort of natural square. Rook c8, I thought it was also very natural. And here, I, you know, I wasn't sure already what to do. And I chose a plan that was definitely um, sort of um, high risk, high reward, so to speak. I decided to play for rook e1 and for a quick uh, break on e4. And... Uh, you know, if my opponent reacted properly, this would have been a completely different game. Um, my opponent, you know, plays bishop e7, which he should. And after e4, he should have just castled. Um, you know, I, I was sort of threatening d5, but I was actually calculated during, this, during the game, and I felt like this actually wasn't a threat uh, at all. And the computer sort of agrees with that, as after e d5, uh, knight b4, I do win a piece after d6, but bishop d6, queen d6, knight c2. And my opponent, you know, forks my two rooks. Uh, and unfortunately, I really like development as well. Uh, you, you know, usually two pieces for a rook would be completely fine uh, for the two pieces. But in this case, uh, it's actually, I would say that black is already slightly preferred. And I checked some sample line, uh, you know, by the engine, uh, which is just a 93, you know, finishing development. And then B4 was the top move. And <clears throat> not that this would all, you know, get played, but this was sort of, you know, what the engine was, uh, you know, showing as the first line. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I would say that I would take black in this position probably, uh, as uh, I believe uh, he, my pieces are a little bit uncoordinated. Uh, the knight lacks sort of any outposts that he can occupy. Uh, Black's king is completely safe, so I can't, you know, create some, some threats against the king. Uh, I still like development, I would say. And, you know, the rooks can definitely sort of... Uh, try to cause havoc uh, uh, in this position uh, with a lot of open files. Obviously a very long line, a lot of things could have went differently, but this was sort of the sample first line of the engine, just to showcase that, uh, you know, d5 wasn't really much of a threat after e4. My opponent, you know, luckily for me, sort of uh, fell for my bluff, uh, decided to play knight b4, and uh, now the position sort of, I would say, is already very, very dangerous from the black's perspective because I just get my knight in, you know, I sort of complete development. Queen b6, I think, is another inaccurate, inaccurate move. You know, it gives me bishop b3, but basically uh, uh, an additional tempo. And here I think black's position just collapses after rook fd8, as after a3, knight a6, knight f7, uh, not the only move, but uh, the most precise move sort of uh, should end the game more or less immediately. Um, the only sort of downside of this position for me was that I was incredibly low on time uh, already, even though it's only move 17 and we just left the, the opening territory. But again, I was spending a lot of uh, time in the opening as I was trying to decide what to play, as I didn't expect my openings, uh, my opponent's opening choice. After king e7, e5, uh, I thought after knight g8, I at the very least always have a perpetual with queen f3. And... Uh, you know, king eight, queen h5, because uh, my opponent can't really block. Uh, sorry, king e8. Um, but of course, I wasn't going to go for it. Uh, the engine uh, claims a massive advantage for white already, uh, about, you know, almost almost plus five, I believe, even though he's a piece down. Uh, I, th I believe one of the most direct ways to sort of uh, completely open up the position and uh, cause major problems for black is with queen e3, f3 check, king e8, and d5. And again, some sample moves would be like knight c5, you know, knight e4 comes. And after ed, knight e6, the rook is eyeing the king behind all of these pieces. But after, you know, the file is forced open, uh, an additional piece joins the attack. And um, black's position is completely busted. Whereas after, you know, let's say um, queen b8, let's say in this position. Uh, so king f8, uh, queen f3, king e8 d5 and queen b8. Uh, I can just uh, play queen h5 check, king f8, and uh, the clinical move bishop h3, just increasing the pressure on e6, 
and uh, again the engine just loves uh, white's position i would say bishop h3 and uh, the following uh, threats are a little bit less obvious but i'm never one to sort of doubt the engine and like i've even looking at the position i would say maybe it's something as simple as uh for example i'm not even sure if this is the best move but let's say you know takes takes queen f5 um king e8 let's say and then e6 seems like it uh, would just uh, murder uh, the black king and kill the game uh, something like this i mean i would yeah definitely think that white is completely winning uh, instead i decided to go for a different approach and it just shows that i'm not very well versed uh, in these sort of uh, dynamic attacking positions uh, bishop e4 obviously doesn't spoil the entire t of the advantage but it's already a step in the wrong direction as the bishop was perfectly placed on g2 where it was. After bishop p8, you know, black sort of gets uh, some breathing room already. Uh, again, the best move would be here for, for white to just take on h7. I play another uh, inaccuracy, which is queen f3. After bishop f7, I want to take on, on h7 with the bishop because I felt like uh, there were some potential ideas with bishop g6. Uh, my opponent, you know, tries to force a queen trade, queen c6, queen e8. Uh, completely guards the uh, the bishop on f7 and now I think uh, the engine really likes just bringing another rook into the game and sort of continuing uh, the position and uh, gameplay as if nothing happened you know as if the material was even as if the position was completely standard just bringing more pieces into the game with rook ad1 uh, for example I decided to go for bishop b7 uh, and uh, just again showing uh, my complete lack of understanding in, in these positions and I'm super materialistic as uh, I like to be in a lot of cases where I just grab material uh, whenever I see it. And to be fair, I was very optimistic about my position, uh, even though the evaluation has decreased probably by 10 times, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, so instead of plus five, you know, it's maybe like plus 0.5 for white, maybe it's even less than that. Um, I felt like my opponent shouldn't have enough time to consolidate his position. Uh, and I will eventually grab an, a, a fourth pawn on c4. And then I thought, you know, his king is still somewhat weak. And uh, with four pawns and a rook for two pieces, uh, I like my chances. Unfortunately for me, things are not as simple as I thought they were. Uh, and after rook ac1, you know, my opponent plays bishop d8, which is a pretty good move. Uh, rook e2, knight e7, you know, brings the knight into uh, the block hitting squares. Rook is to two, I'm, you know, following my own plan. And then, you know, he blitzes out queen d5. And here I kind of started realizing that uh, it's not actually so easy at all to grab that pawn d5. And for example, if I take on d5, I felt like my position could be already even worse because I don't really have a concrete way to uh, fully undermine this uh, pawn on c4. I'm still very slow to, uh, to establish, you know, if my pawns were already on g4 and f5, I would say, yeah, position is completely over, but I'm still 310 p away from getting into that sort of um, situation. And uh, I think black is already preferring this position. Um, so after queen d5, I sort of, sort of uh, uh, was getting low on time as well. And I felt like my advantage completely slipped away. And uh, this sort of game it, uh, from this stage on became a complete uh, free for all where uh, all three results became possible. Uh, where, <laughs> again, after move, what was it, uh, like move 17, uh, <laughs> I had a plus five, plus five position. So it just shows why, you know, people should, uh, well, and, and they don't resign uh, prematurely these days and just uh, keep playing out because I feel like uh, people's um, uh, defensive efforts and uh, uh, I definitely think that, uh, you know, I, I, for example, don't spend enough time on trying to learn to convert uh, such positions because, uh, you know, just uh, old masters would say, oh, yeah, it's just a matter of technique, you know, plus five, you know, no big, uh, like it's uh, easily convertible. But uh, to actually, you know, find those moves of the board, somehow it always feels like it's just uh, harder than it is uh, when you're analyzing at home. Um, so anyway, uh, going back to the game, uh, where, where are we at? Queen d5. Um, I believe uh, the computer said the best move was king g2, sort of keeping the tension. I um, I couldn't really understand why would I want to, you know, my king on a light square when my opponent's bishop is so close from entering uh, the game. So I decided to play queen f4. 
and uh, already here the engine says black is slightly better uh, after a move for example such as rook c6 basically just uh, protecting against the the only idea that i have which is b3 and establishing a total sort of central control of the pieces and then eventually you know the king will slide over to g8 or e8 and then the bishop will come out you know and uh, the position is very difficult to play for white i would say and uh, uh, i would be very lucky not to lose this game in my opinion even if i still have the material advantage on the other hand, queen b5 also makes sense, you know, trying to bring the knight into the game. Uh, but it is a slight inaccuracy. Uh, bishop d2 uh, is what I play in the game. Uh, trying to sort of remaneuver my bishop to a more active diagonal. Uh, King g8 unpins the bishop. Bishop b4. Bishop g6. Bishop takes e7. And now my opponent, uh, I think he saw some tactical ideas. And he sort of, uh, you know, got, uh, uh, I would say, distracted by them or, you know, uh, they, they call it the winner's high this is maybe the sacrificial high where you just uh, s see an idea where you sacrifice something and you win and, and you go for it even though objectively you know your opponent uh has you know a better move than to, to to accept your sacrifice and also objectively you have a better approach uh to play as well in this position after bishop e7 uh, the computer still claims the slide advantage for black and uh, uh an example line of the computer could be like rook c3 uh, queen d5, b3. I finally got my b3 idea, but unfortunately, bishop a3 is a move. Uh, if bc4, queen a5, a very important move, and these rooks uh, sort of collapse, collapse as they can't uh, keep protecting one another. Uh, so I would have to take with the rook. Uh, rook f8, uh, rook c8, you know, trying to trade uh, a pair of rooks, which is always, uh, almost always beneficial when you have two rooks against one. And after bishop e8, uh, again, the engine suggests just taking, playing rook c7, rook f8, queen g4, rook f7 as one of the sample sort of lines. And, uh, you know, uh, the rooks would probably get traded. And uh, we would get a position with uh, a queen and a bishop uh, against a queen and three pawns. Uh, but uh, black has sort of uh, a very well-established blockade. And also this pawn is on a dark square and it cannot be supported by other pawns. And this pawn is also weak. Uh, so I would say an ideal situation for white would be is to try to trade these two pawns somehow for the a7 pawn. Uh, and uh, I think the position is still very close to a draw, but uh, because queen and a bishop usually aren't very good, uh, aren't aren't the pieces with very good synergy. Uh, usually, you want a queen and a knight, um, as they complement each other much better. Uh, but uh, yeah, I still think black would have all the chances in this position, just because my structure is a a as bad as it is. Instead, again, my opponent sees some 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 nice tactical ideas and decides to go for bishop c2, but uh, it's not not that clear. And, and after queen f8, king h7, rook c2, queen b3, rook c3, queen b2, rook f3. Uh, funnily enough, I believe the engine says that these are more or less all first line moves. Uh, and then at this point, my engine at least realizes that uh, this position is actually more like most likely a draw. Uh, and at first it was giving queen e as a winning line, and this is kind of crazy in my opinion. After queen b1 check, king b2, queen, queen g2 rather, king g2 rather, queen b7, uh, bishop d8, c2, queen h5 check, king g8, bishop g5, rook f8, queen g4, queen d5, white is up a bishop and two pawns. Five point advantage in this position. And uh, I believe this might be a draw. Why is this a draw? Because there's no realistic way of untangling uh, from this pin that black has on the long diagonal. And this pawn on c2 uh, is also holding my pieces sort of at bay. Uh, again, I haven't really checked, you know, fully th fully through if this is actually a draw. Uh, but uh, my, uh, my engine's evaluation is stuck at like plus 1.3 for white. And it, it doesn't shift. So I'm assuming this might be a fortress. And uh, again, it just shows how far the engines have come and uh, uh, how, how amazing sometimes chess can be where white is up a bishop and two pawns in a position where he has like a lot of moves that he can make. Uh, but again, the engine was just showing a draw. So maybe there was some other way to try and consolidate for white uh, uh, after queen f8. Uh, but let's not delve into it right now. Uh, 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 I decided to play rook f7. And again, this is a draw for a very concrete reason. After queen b1, check king g2, my opponent has to go queen e4. And basically the idea is to bring the king to the h-file. So after rook f4, queen h6, rook h4, 
uh, I, I would basically have to, well, it's a check first of all, and uh, I more or less have to block uh, with rook h4 as I have no uh, threats against the king and the black pawn is marching uh, very quickly. And then my opponent just sacrifices his queen, uh, plays c2, I play bishop g5, and we get into a position where my opponent uh, eventually queens. And again, like just going through the first lines of the engine, um, my engine shows something along the lines uh, of this. Uh, my opponent has to play bishop h4, which uh, it's uh, an only move basically, because if he moves somewhere, the bishop, let's say here, I believe g4 uh, is very difficult to meet. And after bishop h4, g h4, uh, computer says this is an equal ending, uh, which I would agree with, uh, but definitely still some play left. Uh, and again, it just shows how, how long in DPN you know, I have to calculate to sort of understand that uh, it's basically a 13 move line, right? Um, to sort of, you know, get a position which is still not over. Uh, the game is still not over, but you have to evaluate this as an equal ending. Obviously, black doesn't really have any other options, but still... You have to calculate that that deep, and we both were down, I think, to less than three minutes at this point. So it's obviously completely impossible uh, to foresee all of this uh, in an actual game. Uh, and after queen g6, basically the difference is my king is not on h3, uh, so I can play rook f4, and now queen h6 uh, unfortunately is not a check. Um, so basically that's the difference, and I can play other moves uh, that win the game. Uh, I believe maybe one of the moves was bishop f6 um, uh, or something like that. Um, yeah, this I, I believe uh, is is winning. Uh, again, if I would win it uh, over the board is a is a different question overall. Um, my opponent is it's that plays bishop e seven sort of uh, commits karikiri uh, uh, as they would say, and after c two uh, there's a couple of winning moves for white, but uh, the the winning idea is basically uh, the same. Uh, basically, if you give uh, black a move, uh, he's potentially threatening at some point to play bishop a3. Maybe not immediately because I have rook h4. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, after, for example, queen d3, uh, then uh, black will already be potentially threatening that. Uh, again, the, the position is very sort of um, not necessarily over. And also bishop g5 is actually idea I completely forgot. Bishop g5 was uh, his idea and uh, basically attacking the rook and then uh, also eyeing the c1 square. But luckily for me, I have d5 and after e d5, rook d4. Again, my opponent can't take on a3 uh, because of rook h4. And uh, after bishop g5, which he played in the game, I now have f4, which uh, closes the bishop. And uh, the game is uh, more or less over after this point uh, because uh, my king is perfectly safe. And uh, I'm a rook and two pawns up basically for a bishop. And uh, that's a, yeah, a winning material advantage. So a very crazy game. Uh, the fortress after queen e4 uh, is definitely something to <laughs> to sort of gaze at and uh, appreciate. Um, oh, sorry, not, not, not the fortress. Uh, the fortress was here. Yeah, the fortress was here after uh, queen e8, uh, which computer said I was winning at first. Um, so yeah, a very turbulent game. Um, you know, I was completely winning out of the opening uh, in many, many ways. Like there was, I think four or five moves, every move for like at, at least three moves of that uh, would keep the winning advantage. And uh, I successfully managed to spoil it, get into a worse position. And then in time trouble, my opponent uh, mishandled his position, still had uh, amazing fortress resource, uh, which I, th I, th I think is a fortress. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it looks like this is a fortress. Uh, and then uh, I managed to eventually find this d5 in, in, uh, in the seconds of the clock and win the game. So two out of two. Uh, again, uh, one of my best tournaments ever, right? So it has to be a good start. Uh, and uh, that was round two. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the recap for round three. Till then.